Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 15. Verse 9 to 10. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 9 to verse 10. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I. But the grace of God which was with me. Can you give me NIV? As we saw NIV, we're there. NIV. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. I want to look at a topic titled, last, last week we dealt with faithfulness and service rights. And then today we are looking at grace for service. Grace for service. Number one, I said something here. It is grace that makes the great difference between a man and the next man. The only difference between two of you is just grace. And when you have this understanding, you don't have to puff up. You don't have to Allow pride to crush you over what the grace is doing out of you. Over what the grace of God is doing out of you. It is grace that makes people great. Paul said, I am what I am by grace. He started by giving us the background of his Christian journey. He said, number one, I persecuted the church. So by that understanding, I should not even near the church. Talk more of receiving the mantle of an apostle. He said, I dealt with the church. I killed so many Christians. I don't know whether you know that it was this Paul that executed Philip. I mean, Stephen. He ordered the death of Philip of Stephen and commanded the people to stone him to death. He, he caused half fork in the body of Christ. So going by human calculations, he is already written off. There are people under the sound of my voice. Men may have written you off because of your past. But I'm here to tell you there is a grace that will set you ahead of others. Somebody's amen is very poor here. Amen. Men may have written you off. Going by your past characters, going by your past life, they look at you with the past activities of your life and they want to use it to place an embargo upon your life. Paul said that by human calculation, I was not supposed to be close to the things of God, but I am what I am by the grace of God. So he acknowledged the fact that what made the difference in his life between him and other apostles was grace. Now, if you are a Bible scholar, you will understand by the way of divine selection that when when Judas betrayed Christ and died and there was a prophecy prior to that time his seat let another take in God's original agenda Paul was kept for the office but the disciples of Jesus Christ out of their own understanding choose Matthias to choose the place of Apostle Paul but if you are a Bible scholar you will agree with me that we only heard 
about Matthias after the day of his selection. After selection, nobody heard about him again. Why? He was the selection of man, but not the selection of Christ. Until Paul came and the mantle fell upon him, Peter picked him up and said, We heard you bear the title and apostle when you had no relationship with Jesus Christ. Because apostleship, there are categorical criteria to becoming an apostle. Number one, you must be born again. Number two, you must have face to face encounter with Jesus Christ. It is not just something you pick up and then you, you start answering the name apostle. It is not a title, it's an encounter. So Peter said to Paul, Can you drop that title? Because you have no right to bear the title. Because we knew you had no relationship with Jesus Christ. And Paul looked into his eyes and said to him, Peter, you never even had the courage to stand before me to share the gospel of this Jesus Christ when I was on the other side. But something happened in a day in my life. I was on my way to a place, a way to a place to cause havoc in the church. But along the road to my, my Damascus, a man appeared before me and his name was Jesus Christ. He introduced himself to me by that introduction. I met him face to face. You may not qualify me, but Jesus qualified me. I may not be counted, but he counted me. And as soon as he entered, he took the mantle and he did the work of an apostle. He did the work of an evangelist. He preached from city to city. He made impact even more than those that were with Jesus by grace. He said, let nobody look at me. Let nobody think it is an exceptional something or there is something I do that you don't do. Most of the things I do, you do it. But what I am is the product of grace. And it takes grace to be an exceptional servant. There are people with grace for service. Service is never possible until you have received grace to function. It's never possible. You know, some things are easy to preach, but very, very difficult to practice. In fact, there are so many things we preachers preach on the altar at home we find it difficult to do it. <laughs> you know, I'm a sincere person. I will tell you the truth. You won't take me to court. But I will tell you the truth. You see, Peter denied Jesus. Three times. But when the spirit of grace came upon him, he stood and preached fearlessly before thousands of men and women and he converted about 3,000 people. He stood before leaders who opposed the gospel. Peter stood and defended his belief, not minding the consequences, because grace came upon him. The spirit of grace came upon him. If you read Luke chapter 22, verse 54 to 62, the Bible talking about how he denied Jesus Christ. Before a question called stricken there, somebody just looked at him and said, oh God, you look like one of the apostles of this man. He said, God forbid. But this was the same person that confessed to Jesus, where you die, I will die. Where you go, I will go. But because it has not been given to him, the grace to follow him has not been given to him. He found it difficult. Please, can I, can I, can I say this at this point? Salvation is not by muzzle. That you live above some certain sin is not only the function of your work that is a grace connected to it. So when you see others struggling to come up, don't just go and condemn them. Stretch forth a hand of love until Christ is formed in them. 
Peter actually meant his confession. Peter, you hope to the When he said to Jesus, I will follow you to any end. It was from his heart. How do I know? The Bible said one of the days when they came to arrest Jesus Christ, he picked sword and cut the ear of one of the servants of the people. That was a sign of loyalty and commitment. It takes a loyal servant to defend the leader. There are some people in the midst of battle, they will sell you. There are some in the midst of battle, they will abandon you. In fact, they will tell you, there is no way I can make your enemy my enemy. But Peter never acted in that order. But Peter lacked the capacity, he lacked the grace to follow Christ. But if you read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus speaking to them, he said, And ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost speaks of the spirit of grace. He said that is something you were not able to do while I was with you because you are operating under my grace. You are operating under my influence. But at this time I am going up and I am coming back to live in you as a spirit. And then when I live in you, you will not have the capacity of doing what ordinary people could not do. So Peter received the Holy Ghost in chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles and in verse 14 through 41 the Bible said he stood up and he preached to the people. He spoke to them. He spoke the undiluted word of God. He spoke the raw word of God. He released the light to the people not minding the crowd that gathered. And the Bible said the same day they had a convert of about 3,000 men that entered into the church. And if you read chapter 3, when he healed the man at the, at the beautiful gate, the Bible said the priest, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees, they arrested him. What was the problem? The problem was not just the miracle. The problem was the name behind the miracle. The problem that the world is having with the church is not just church. It is the man, Jesus. And that is why anyone who dare to preach him will see the effect of his glory. Anyone who dare to preach him, let me tell you, philosophical sermon is far different from the sermon about Christ. There is economical sermon. There is educational sermon. There is social sermon. Or there is a sermon of the kingdom. When Christ is promoted, those who promote Christ, their life will remain promoted forever. For the Bible says, if you lift me before men, I will draw men unto myself. There is a drawing when you lift him up. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. They said to Peter, they tell the apostle, they arrested the apostles. And in chapter 4 of Acts of the Apostles, if you read from verse 18 to 20, the Bible said they, they, they flogged the apostles and they commanded them not to preach in that name. And Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, said to them, Is it right for us to obey your command and not to preach the things we have seen, we have heard? and our hands have handled it. This was a man who ran because a lady said, you look like one of the apostles. But when grace came upon him, he was standing face to face with the accusers of the brethren. He was standing face to face. I don't know whether you know there are people who are ashamed of carrying Bible. There are people who go to church in the morning but despise Christ when they get home. They act as though they never go to church. If you see them discuss about church matters, you will wonder whether this person has ever entered church once. You are just deceiving yourself. But in this service, that is a grace that is coming upon you. A, you know there are people that cannot preach in a bus. They can't preach in a bus. And if you cannot preach in a public bus, you will not have your private car. 
Oh, it's horrible. To preach in the car, in the bus, is to tell God, I'm tired of this public life. Give me my own car. <laughs> but you say no, enjoy it. I didn't cost anybody. Else. So when grace came, Peter stood. Peter went. Peter defended the gospel. Do you know there were days if we are called to present something in the church, my two legs will be vibrating. My hand will be shaking. I will be looking at people's face. If there is any atom of smile or laughter, everything you cram will just disappear. There are days when the church is going for evangelism. We have to hide at the back. Give the meters away. So that people that will see us will not know that we are moving with these mad people. But when the time came, when we received grace, boy, oh boy. We talk to you raw. Man to man, face to face. Irrespective of your personality and your position in the society. Because we have received the grace. So the reason why you are struggling in your walk with God, the reason why you are struggling in serving God is because you have not been in grace. But today, as I minister the word, there is a grace coming to you. Now, let me quickly run through this and then we start summarizing the first service. Ten components of service. Ten components of service. We are looking at grace for service and then we are looking at ten components. Why am I looking at this component? I am looking at this component to tell you how difficult it is to serve. And if you don't have grace, you can't dare it. Number one, humility. It takes humility to serve. And it is very, very hard for so many people to be humble. Especially when you can count ordinary one million. A man called a man and said, he, they, they came back for Esma celebration. He said, I have one million naira in my account. If anybody will make any noise, I will jail you. And the next man touched him and we said, I have 50 million. And he turned and said to him, and you look normal. Like this. My one million is making me mad. And your 50 million naira, you relax. Humility is the reason why a professor can descend so low as to be a sanctuary keeper in the house of God. Humility is the reason why a PhD holder, PhD in medicine, will abandon medicine and become a public evangelist. It takes humility. It is not easy. It takes humility. Without being humble, you cannot serve. You won't even serve your God. Because there are some people, especially when they start sleeping with your God's wife, they become a God. You talk, they talk. Some girls, when they start sleeping with their organ, they become executive madam. Or girls that sleep with girls, madam that sleep with the boys, repent or be judged. Number two, loyalty. 
If you are not loyal, you cannot serve. Because there are so many things that will come your way. There are so many things that will compel you to deviate. But loyalty is what helps you to stick in your place of assignment. Not minding the error of the one you are serving. Not minding the delay you experience in God. You know there are times you pray and God seems to not it's like he's not hearing you. He takes loyalty not to accuse God. There are people who are accusing God. He takes loyalty not to accuse God. Number three, total obedience. Total obedience. Not partial obedience. Total obedience. Rise up, you rose up. We have pray, workers prayer in the morning. You didn't consider your body system. You totally obey the order. This department have a meeting at this hour. Irrespective of the project ahead of you, you still come to the point of carrying out that given instruction. Number four, endurance. Endurance. It takes endurance to be a good servant. It takes endurance. You know there are days you go to serve a man, you become an apprentice. And the man came down and signed five years agreement with your parents. And towards the five years, he comes back to tell the people, I am here to raise capital to say to this man, can they give me more two years? Some will say no. I am done. I'll go and wait for you in my house. After the two years, you can come and settle me. And then they lose everything. They lose everything. It takes endurance. It takes endurance for somebody to say, if I can stay here for five years, is it two years that I cannot endure? If you don't have the spirit of endurance, you cannot serve very well. But there are so many things that will come up. Number five, joy. It takes joy. Do you know there are some who serve but have no reward because they serve in anger. They serve with grudges. The Bible says, by, by joy, we throw water out of the well of salvation. Number six, love. 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 I was, I had a program with, uh, uh, what do you call it, Sunrise Radio. Right yesterday right. about yeah. Valent Valentine. Yeah, Valentine and they were asking me about love I said what we see in our society among our youth is lost not love they say what is love I said we have existed in this we have been in this order that love is a feeling but I have come to understand by the way of experience that love is stronger than a feeling. Love is a spirit. Is a spirit. When the spirit of love comes upon a man, he doesn't consider the danger ahead in that marriage. He is in love. And there is nothing you can do to talk out that spirit. What you don't understand is that that love is not a feeling. Because if it is a feeling, there are so many things that kill feelings. Betrayer can kill feelings. Maltreatment can kill feelings. Starvation can kill feelings. But once it is a spirit, spirit never dies. You cannot serve God if you don't love God. Because when you don't love God, you easily pick offense. You consider people. You don't consider God. Uh, we had the rehearsal the other day. Brother Koron didn't come. And there was no reaction. Therefore, next week, I must not come. It's a revelation that you don't have love for God. 
when you have love all that surrounds your mind will be on how to please him number seven right forgiveness if you don't have forgiveness you cannot serve effectively why there is no way you can coexist with a fellow human being without offenses right where I am I am not a perfect man I can offend you and if you look at my weaknesses you may not serve God but if you have a heart of forgiveness you will first of all understand that the man of God is first of all human before becoming man of God and that human nature can make a lot of terrible mistakes so you don't judge by the mistake because you have the gifts and the spirit, the fruits of forgiveness. I forgive my HOD. I forgive this one. I forgive the other one. If you don't have the that grace of forgiveness, you 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 cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a Christian. You carry malice. You pick offense. Hey, they talk to me like this. Hey, they spoke to me like this. Hey, why wouldn't they honor me like this? Hey, the way I'm regarded like this. Nobody is the owner of the church. The owner is Jesus. Jesus you must not be over honored. Am I communicating? Yeah. Whether they make you dicking or no dicking. Do you know there are some people who may pick offense? They made this one a dickoness. They didn't make me dickoness. I won't follow again. That's an error. That's an error. Number eight. Tolerance. Tolerance. If you don't have the spirit of tolerance, you cannot serve. You have to tolerate those ahead of you. You have to tolerate those that have been at you. You know there are leaders who resign from their leadership work because they can't tolerate the characters of their subjects. Is it because I am the HOD that's why you are talking to me like this? Is it because I carry Bible that is why you speak to me like this? To be a Christian, to be a full-time Christian, in those days, can I tell you this? Most of these policemen that run their mouths cannot withstand your blow. You know that? Can I even take it to the next level? Most of the soldiers that are doing garagara, you without training, if they leave two of you, you will bury some of them. But you can't. If you try it, uh -huh. Uh -huh. number nine, meekness. It takes meekness. It may accommodate more people. People can lay insults. Idiots. He's bad. He's evil. He's a bad man. He's a bad woman. Look at him. Look at her. And yet, you see favor coming to the person. You didn't block it. You see, allow it to flow. If you don't have meekness, you cannot serve. Number 10, faithfulness. If you are not faithful, there is no way you can serve. Let me add this one. Making it 11. Understanding. If you don't have understanding, understanding the system, understanding the instructions, understanding the leader, if you don't have understanding, you cannot serve. You cannot serve. You cannot serve. Do you know there are people? You call them. They won't pick your call. Not because they hate you. But there is an understanding. 
And if you don't understand that character, you walk out. So I've been calling you. You don't pick my calls. No, a person of understanding knows that relationship is progressive. It starts from a point and it gets to a point. It is only at a rare situation that somebody sees you today and open up today. Then there is an exceptional grace. If not, that is a process. If you don't have the process, I gave 2,000. A lady left this ministry when we were running ministry. You know her case. She said that they were not a year 2,000. But the a phone. a and they brought because she was one of the workers then in the ministry. So I said, I said, I said ah, I'm not offended. One day they bundled her. She was dying. They carried her to my, my house. I saw them through the window. Flesh came. She left. Let her die. But the spirit came. She deserved to live. After all, she's still a Christian. She was offended out of misunderstanding. So don't join a fool to become a fool. What did I just say? Don't join a fool. A man of God and late Archbishop of the house I went to a, 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 a church. And there was a preacher before them. And the preacher was just busy messing things up. The other man grabbed the house and said, Archbishop, let's live here. This man is a fool. He said, live here. He said, sit down. Let's listen to him. At least we should listen to him. Let's listen to the fool so that we don't become fools. So sometimes you listen to a fool and learn how not to become a fool. Everybody is a teacher, including the madman that is walking on the street. If you don't have understanding, you pick offense over everything. And let me tell you, as long as you are in the world, you can never be free from offenses. Never. Never. Until the day you die. Let me tell you. I am not boasting. If people see life the way I see life, you can even spend a night with the devil in your room. Find a way to make that offense look like a blessing. The name Adam called them became their name. Somebody called me and said, Sir, don't be offended. Though. I insulted you. Don't be offended. I laugh. He said, Sir, what is that? I said, to you, you are too small to offend me. You can't. Your reaction is based on your level of understanding. So I know that you are yet to know. Talk. Let's talk. Forget about the past. It doesn't exist. And I'm telling you from my heart, it does not exist. If you have register where you keep record of evil, you will die out of bitterness. Stop writing the offenses. Not even in your heart. Flush it out. All these things I have listed down. Galatians chapter 5 called them the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And that spirit is the spirit we call the spirit of grace. In order to enjoy grace, you need to have the Holy Spirit. To possess these qualities, you must have in you the spirit of grace. Paul says, I am what I am. By the grace. But hear this as I conclude. Grace 
doesn't sponsor laziness. Oh, they have do men NIV for said, NIV said, I work harder. I work harder. Yeah, but though I work harder, oh, it really is really not my work oh, that have the credit. Okay. It is the yeah. grace of God. Oh, when that grace comes, oh, you see yourself flowing in your oh, department. Oh, when that grace oh, comes, oh, you oh, see yourself washing the church, cleaning the church. When the grace comes, you see yourself anything you are doing for the body of Christ in the house of God, you are doing it with all level of love, joy, not minding who is criticizing and who is not criticizing, no matter how good you are, that is a comma, that comma is your advantage to fly, be happy and serve God to the best of your ability. To the best of what? Never exist without a walk in the house of God. Get connected. Fix yourself in the department. Do your best. Do it with joy. As we pray for How do we receive grace? How do we receive grace? It's not by walk. It is God's exceptional choice. It is his right. Number one. Number two. He giveth grace to the humble. He takes humility to capture grace. Be humble. Now, don't don't misplace humiliation with humility. Blessed are those who are poor in the heart. To be poor in the heart means that you are rich in the hand. But in your heart, you are humble. You are humble. The abundance of what you have doesn't control you. You always come down to relate with people. You always reason with people, not minding your position. The Bible says he giveth grace to the simple, to the humble. Number three, and then we pray, how to receive grace, your heart system is what opens you up to grace. There are people who are wicked in their hearts. Can I say this? Do you know there are people that can never change? Do you know there are people that can never change? They won't change. Don't waste your time on them. God looks at the heart. How you reason. How you accommodate. You know, in that romance, the Bible says, let your love be sincere. Another version said, let it come from your heart. When your heart is pure, when your heart is clean, there is no ulterior motive surrounded what you are doing. Do you know there are some who are giving you something just to seduce you? Do you know that? No, God has seen that heart. If your heart is pure, that was why God selected David. He said to Samuel, you look at the outward appearance, but I'm looking at the heart. You cannot assess the secret behind any man's success, but you have assessed the heartbeat of that person. It is your heart that determines your height. If your heart is black, your color is dark. If your heart is pure, you are not a black man. You are a white man. Receive grace to serve Jesus. Rise to your feet. One no two onye onye sopota na re lemo oko si si ne chenule one no two onye onye sopota.
service in God's house. I cost that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Everyone under the sound of my voice, any sickness in your body, you will see it by 4 p.m. today. From now to 4 p.m., that is going to be a total cleansing. That lumps is no longer there. That infection is no longer there. That disease is no longer there. That curse is no longer there. I command open doors. I command divine connection. I command divine miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Divine miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every good thing you desire of this Jesus be handed over to you. And as you move on to serve him, may heaven reward you abundantly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even when man fail to honor you, may heaven never fail to honor you. Can I pray for all married men and women here? One word. May God give you children that will take care of you at your old age. This is your season of joy. It's your season of miracles. It's your season of testimonies. Go into the world. Manifest grace. Possess your possession. This is your season. In Jesus' mighty name. 